Hi, I'm Ed Cairns, a naturalist and writer, live in the Adirondacks along the Saranac River, and I'm very excited to be here with Mountain Lake PBS, uh, sharing some of the things that I find really interesting and exciting uh, in the world of nature. And uh, I can't think of a better way to uh, introduce myself and, and nature in the Adirondacks by uh, looking at one of the great phenomena that we enjoy here every year, the annual emergence and migration of the spotted salamanders as they head out of the woods and down to their breeding ponds. This is a, a spotted salamander. It's uh, an amphibian. Salamanders are cousins of frogs. And uh, this is, I think, one of the most spectacular amphibians in North America. I know the first time I saw one, I couldn't believe it was real. I thought it looked like something that walked out of a Dr. Seuss book. They're very gentle creatures. They're, at least they seem gentle to us. They're actually pretty ferocious predators in the soil. They eat earthworms and beetles millipedes, centipedes, they even eat other salamanders, some of the smaller species of salamander. So I guess uh, whether they're ferocious or not is a matter of perspective. One of the eye-catching things about the animal are those beautiful grooves that run down the side of the body. They're sort of distinctive. And of course the gorgeous polka dots. We're going to turn this baby over here and look at the bottom. Uh, frogs, salamanders, reptiles have an opening called the cloaca. Cloaca is the Latin word for sewer, amusingly, and anyhow that's where they do all their business. And the cloaca is very swollen on a male in the springtime, and this one is not swollen, so this is a female. And she's heading back to the woods now after breeding, so she's probably laid her eggs. And she's going to head back to her favorite patch of woods, crawl into a hole in the ground, or dig her way in, and she'll be there until next year. Cool. One of the things I always do is, is wet my hands, or if I'm with a group, I'm leading a walk, a group of kids, we, we, uh, we all go to the nearest water or pond and get our hands wet before we handle it. Uh, or sometimes I'll even, if I'm, I know I'm going out for them, I'll bring along a mister bottle and mist the animal with water and, and mist our hands and keep them wet. They are uh, these days protected by law in most states. They're, they're uh, strictly protected in New York State. So it's against the law now to, to bring them home and keep them as a pet and that kind of thing, although people used to do that in the past. They live a long, long time. People would bring these home as, with their kids, their five-year-old kid maybe, and keep one as a pet. And when the five-year-old kid goes off to college, mom and dad are still caring for the salamander. And the five-year-old kid gets, grows up and gets married and brings the grandchildren home and the mom and dad are still caring for the salamander. So these little things can live for decades. For more than 30 years, I, I've gone out with uh, friends. Uh, some of them have had to be dragged along the first time, but nobody needs to be dragged along a second time. Uh, to go out on, on nights at sort of the end of winter, beginning of spring, the snow melts and the, the ground thaws, and, and these salamanders and this, this ancient ritual, which is probably 100 million years old or longer, these animals rise up out of the forest floor and migrate downhill to, to shallow ponds. Many of them are just pools of, of melted snow. They're not even ponds in the summertime at all. And uh, they, they, they meet each other there, they court, they, they mate, they lay eggs, and then they march back into the woods and dive down into the soil and they live underground most of the year. And it's just sort of a, a fun thing. Uh, I think part of the fun just comes from the fact that it's such a limited resource. You can only do it once a year for a few nights. And, uh, and it's a social thing. The groups of people got to get, get together. I, I, I've done this for years with all sorts of friends. And it's, uh, I guess for some people, it's a sort of an odd form of entertainment. But uh, again, once somebody's done it, they want to do it again. Here are three spotted salamanders picked up off the road. And uh, you, you can see what stunning creatures they are. The yellow spots almost look like some uh, practical joker came along with a little paint and dabbed it on there, but it's, uh, it's what nature has fitted them out with. Scientists think the yellow dots are a form of warning coloration like the bright orange of a monarch butterfly. Uh, in the case of the butterfly, the orange, uh, the orange color lets birds and other things know that the, uh, the butterflies don't taste good and they're, they're somewhat poisonous to, to eat. And the same is true with these spotted salamanders. They have uh, glands on the, on the ridge along the top of their back and on the back of their head that produce distasteful secretions. So uh, most things uh, would tend to leave these spotted salamanders alone. And these are warming up in my hands. They were cold when I picked them up. 
and all of a sudden you can see they're, uh, they're getting frisky. They want to go walk about here. All right, it was fun to spend time with uh, you Mountain Lake PBS viewers. We don't really have a name yet for our nature spots here in Mountain Lake PBS, but uh, maybe you viewers will decide. We'd be happy to hear your ideas. I'm Ed Cans, and thanks for joining me.